Hi, welcome back to the workshop for episode 17 of the Rickenbacker 620 12 string build. And having spent a few weeks working on the fingerboard and getting that somewhere near completion, I'm going to actually move back onto the body in this episode and start to get the control cavities sorted out. So in the last episode, we got all of the binding sorted out on the fretboard, which was quite a mammoth job, but has come out really, really nicely. And I am very happy with it. However, I've spent a lot of time working on this fretboard and I'm kind of at saturation point with it at the moment. So I'm going to step away from that for this episode and kind of turn my attention back onto the body for a little bit and see if we can make some progress with that. And the first thing I want to do is actually get this control cavity sorted out. Now, I've been having to think about this and because we've got the drop top going on here, which is some quite nicely figured maple, there might be an argument for actually going in from the back for these controls and having a, a cover on the back and just have the controls without a scratch plate on the front. However, I think those scratch plates and the way they're configured is quite an important part of the look of this guitar. So I'm not gonna go with that. I am gonna go in through the top. It's good in a couple of ways. It will make my life easier. And as I say, it will look more correct on the guitar when it's finished. But because of the drop top, it's not as easy as it might have been, especially as we haven't got the thing glued on just yet. But I do think it's gonna be easier to actually do it at this stage rather than waiting until the body is completely glued up. Mainly because at this stage, I can just quite easily disassemble this, take four screws out and, and everything's in bits again. So the first stage in this is to do some preparation work on this template and get this big hole cut out so we can use it as a routing pattern. Okay, so that's the bulk of that waste removed. It's not the best blade on that bandsaw for doing that kind of job. Realistically, I'd need something a little bit smaller, but this doesn't have to be kind of super precise. You might have noticed I didn't mess around with it. I just cut through the template, cut my stuff out, and then just glued it back together, putting a little bit of veneer in there just to make up for any material that's taken out by the saw blade. And that will be more than good enough for what we want. So next we'll get this on the bobbin sander and just get this cleaned out to a bit of a nicer shape and we're ready to go. Okay, so there's the control cavity hole cut in the template. There is this other little section marked on the template, which is a cutout to enable drill holes to be put in for the wiring to go through. Now, obviously that will be sat underneath the pit guard, so it isn't visible on the standard guitar, 
but of course my guitar is going to have a drop top on so I can actually route in that channel underneath the drop top and still get access into that cavity without having to have that cut out on the top. Practical terms, it doesn't really make much difference, but I just think it's a neater and cleaner way of doing things. Okay, so with this completed, we can now get the body back onto the bench, strip it down into its component parts, and then look to get this cavity sorted out. Okay, so this is the half of the body that we need to do the work on. And if we look on the drawing, it says in here that the cavity should be routed to within nine millimeters of the rear face. So our body is a little bit thinner than standard because we've got that drop top on and I'm getting that at about 29 mil. So it's just a case of at the moment, we just line up this template with our body best we can. Draw in the shape that we want to remove and we'll get this over to the drill press and kind of get rid of the bulk of this material with a big force in a bit so that we're not removing too much once we get the router on the job. And I've just took that down to a little bit above where I want the final bottom of this to be. I think all in all, I need to go down about 20 mil. And so far I'm at about 14 there. So there's a fair bit to go down, but I always leave that material at the bottom so I can get rid of these little indentations from the force in a bit. So this is gonna be a job for the big router because I'm afraid that the little one will tip into there. So we'll just get the, the template onto it in the normal fashion and we'll get routing. Okay, so I've got the big router set up with a bearing guided cutter in there. I've set that up with my handy little trend depth gauge, which enables you to set things up kind of millimeter perfect every time and this Router has also got this fine adjuster on, which works brilliantly in conjunction with that. So there's nothing really for it now, but to just get this routed out, I'm gonna cut away kind of like the first three mil in there to start with, and then I'll just work my way down in three mil increments until we get to the bottom. We'll just clean it all out.
there's the control cavity routed out. That's actually come out really, really nice. There's just one tiny little scorch mark there where I plunged in for that final cut. But apart from that, it really is quite nice. So happy with that. So with that done, we can now get the top back into play and we can cut the appropriate hole in the top of this. However, I'm going to leave routing the actual final shape until we've got the top glued onto the body. There's plenty of room to get a route around it, so that's not an issue. But my fear is if I do it now, once we come to actually glue the body on, we could get it slightly misaligned and we'd have to redo it, which is less than ideal. So what I intend to do now is just kind of very roughly kind of take out a chunk in the middle there, leave a little margin away from the edge of there. And then once this is all glued together, I can get the little router in with a bottom bearing bit and use this as my template. And I can flush trim that absolutely perfectly. Okay, so literally all I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw around this, but I'm leaving quite a big margin. So that actual line is well within the scope of there. There's probably about a good quarter of an inch all the way around that to spare. So I can be quite confident that I'm not removing material that I'm going to need. Now, obviously I can't do this on the bandsaw because there's no way of getting the blade in there without cutting through, which we don't want to do. I don't really want to use a jigsaw or anything nasty like that because we could kind of splinter and chip the wood and ruin it. So I'm going to just set my bench pin up in my vise and we're going to cut that out very quickly with a coping saw. Okay, so that's that cut out. Little bit scruffy, but it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, all this is, is really just a glorified access hole for our router. And we'll clean that up perfectly when it's all done. So with that out of the way, only really leaves us one more thing to do. And that's back on here, is we need to run in that little channel that's on the template in there through to where the pickup's going to be. Now, as this has got the top on it, I don't really need to run a channel like that. I can actually just run a channel right the way through to where the pickup's going to be, and then that will be hidden by the top once we put it on. So to facilitate that, I'm just going to very quickly mock this up onto the central section so we can see roughly where we need to be doing that. Actually, having done this, it's not that difficult as I thought because we've actually got a mark there already that indicates where our front pickup is going to be. And that's that little screw hole that we're putting on the center line of the pickup. Now, obviously I don't want to route that out because I need it. But what I'm thinking is I can run my little channel quite close to it. And that will still preserve that screw hole that I need. But once we start to route out, because remember that material is going to get removed for the pickup, we should have then an access running through there. If we don't, it won't be too much of a job just to kind of poke a drill bit through into it. And routing this in is gonna be very, very straightforward. I've just got a straight piece of MDF super glued masking taped onto this, and we'll just take the big router and take a couple of passes just to drop that down, probably about six mil. Okay, and there we have those two features routed in and I think they look absolutely beautiful and that leaves us absolutely loads of room to get the wiring and everything sorted out and into this little channel. The one thing I didn't check was whether or not 
my pit guard screws are going to go into there or not. Hopefully they won't. If they do, it's not a massive problem because obviously we've got the top over there. So we just make sure we use screws that aren't going to penetrate right the way through the top. Probably not an issue, but we'll see how we go with it. So that's the control cavity kind of sorted out. So it might seem logical that the next thing to do would be to do some pit guards. However, without really thinking about it too much, I've gone and ordered the wrong pit guard material. So I'm going to be waiting on some new stuff coming in. Hopefully it's going to be here in time to film the next episode. If not, I will be doing something else. But that's all a little bit way off in the future. I'll leave this one here. So as always, like if you've liked, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.